Hope you see as it going. Right, okay, very quick video. Um, just a handful of bits and bobs that I picked up over the last three or four weeks, um, as well as a few recent spins as well. But uh, yeah, first up, this is what I'm seeing in the background, which hopefully you can hear. This is Fella Kuti, live at the Color Kuta Republic. Uh, I think this is late 70s. This is the original copy on uh, Aphrodisia. Um, yeah, I know that Knit and Factory have been putting out a lot of the fella stuff, reissuing it recently, well, so only the last couple of years. I don't think this one has been done yet. Um, definitely worth checking out as and when it comes around. So, uh, yeah, very nice stuff. Right, okay. Right, probably about four weeks ago now. You know when a song gets stuck in your head? Well, um, I, I was listening to a DJ set on the radio by Adrian Young. It was just a half-hour DJ set. The majority of the stuff in, in, in that he played was uh, straight Funk 45s. But he finished with uh, an Aretha Franklin song, uh, Daydreaming, which is uh, was one of her big hits. It was a big single. Um, but I don't know whether it's, you know, you hear a song out of context. It, I say it was totally different to the other stuff that he was playing. Used to hearing it on this album. This is the album that it's taken from uh, 1972 on Atlantic, Young Gifted and Black. Perhaps one of the lesser known records, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, ever since hearing that. I just haven't been able to stop playing it, so this has been my go-to album for the last three or four weeks. Other stuff on there, stuff like Rocksteady, obviously her version of Youngest Gifted and Black. Um, actually, her version of um, Border Song, the Elton John song, is lovely as well, so definitely recommend that. But um, yeah, so I've been on a bit of an Aretha Franklin kick. Uh, this one's been played a lot as well. This is uh, live at the Fillmore West. Yeah, so when Aretha passed away, um, I was listening to the radio and um, I can't remember who it was, but somebody opened their show with the version of Bridge Over Troubled Water from this album, which is just electrifying, you know. So uh, again, if you get a chance, uh, definitely check that out. But this is a really nice album as well, a really good live album. Right then, a few new pickups. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went to Stratford upon Avon. I mentioned before, there's a little record shop over there. Um, so first up, this is uh, Lee Hazelwood, Requiem for an Almost Lady now. I really like Lee Hazelwood. Um, always try and pick up his stuff if, if and when I see it, or be it's not very often. I know that a lot of his stuff has been reissued by Light in the, At Light in the Attic over the last few years. Um, I have got one or two of those, but I must admit I find them quite expensive for what they are, so I have just tended to look for, for the original stuff, so I basically picked this up for the uh, the same price as uh, as one of the reissues. Um, yeah, so this album, quite interesting. Well, first of all, I find Lee Hazel absolutely fascinating because, you know, he's best known for those uh, mid to late 60s duets that he did with um, Nancy Sinatra and stuff like um, Sun Velvet Morning still fans, it sounds totally fresh today, you know, those weird tempo changes. Yeah, just totally unique, a, a unique sounding record. But, um, but yeah, so a lot of people talk about his production techniques, a lot of people talk about his songwriting, but for me, what, what attracts me to his music is his voice. A bit like Johnny Cash, got such a such a distinctive voice. It's almost like a growl, isn't it? The way that he uh, the way he sings. But um, but yeah, captivating. It's uh, yeah, a really unique voice. You know that you're hearing, you listen to him as soon as you hear a record. So um, so yeah, but um, yeah, so a bit of an interesting story in that. I think in the very early 70s, he had to get out of the US because I think he got up with the wrong crowd, so I had to make a sharp exit and ended up in Sweden where he recorded several albums. So this is one of those sweet, um, Sweden albums. Uh, the other one that I've been after is uh, called Cowboy in Sweden, but I've never come across a copy of that. So hopefully one day, but uh, yeah, this is lovely stuff. Beautiful copy as well on Reprise, so very pleased to find that. Right, okay, also the same day, I picked this record up. This is The Meters, Fire on the Bayou. Again, the meters, you can't go wrong with them. Whenever I see their records, or well, certainly original um, presses of their records, I always pick them up. Um, but again, very rarely come across them in the UK. Uh, this is a nice record. This is from 1975, I think. Um, yeah, produced by Alan Toussaint. It's that very distinct, well, they've got such a distinctive sound. Um, you know, their sort of their sort of brand of funk is, is totally unique. So, uh, yeah, wonderful stuff. But, um, yeah, so that's had a fair few spins the last couple of weeks. Um, and talking about Southern funk, obviously Dr. John passed away last week. So, like many people, I've been spinning Dr. John albums. The first one that I pulled out was Dr. John's Gumbo, which is probably my favourite of his records. But uh, this has also had a fair few spins as well. This is uh, In the Right Place. Um, some of his most famous songs on the here is to fight Such a Night, Right Place, Wrong Time. But 
my go-to Dr. John song is a track from this album. Now, I'm not sure whether this is an official release or not. It's a bit of an odds and sods album. Um, I think this is from the early 70s on Trip Records. But the song is called The Grass Looks Greener, which, if you heard it, I don't think you'd say it's, it's Dr. John. It doesn't sound like it. It's a straight soul song. I'll do a needle drop on it. Um, but yeah, when I get a chance, I'll, I'll try and play that song to anybody that will listen. So, uh, but yeah, I'll do a needle drop on that. Very cool. Right, okay. Uh, in a recent video, I showed an album that I bought by an Peacock, which I bought a record store day. Well, I also bought this at the same time. This is Don Cherry, Homeboy, Sister Out, 1985. Um, yeah, this is a fascinating record in that it's quite a mixture of styles, you know. Um, it's a little bit hip hop in places, obviously, it's jazz, but um, there's also definite funk and Afrobeat influences as well. And I suppose it's just really the influences of, of where he's recording the album. It's recorded in France, in Paris. And that sort of mid mid eighties French sound, with um, so with music coming in from certainly from Africa, influence uh, influencing this album quite heavily, you know. So um, I did listen to this a couple of years ago online because I think it was it might have been Light in the Attic that put that out as well, but there's certainly a reissue that came out recently of this. Um, and I did listen to it online at the time, whether to try and decide whether to pick it up. But um, I'm pleased I didn't because I got a nice original copy for half the price of the reissue. So very cool. Right, okay. Um, oh, just very quickly, I've had some nice VL VCLT from Martin Parrot probably a month or so uh, ago now. But um, yeah, Martin sent sent through a nice little pile of Soul and Funk 45. So Nicole Willis um, holding on now. I really like Nicole Willis. Um, it's, it's modern soul. This would have been recorded within the last 10 years or so. But yeah, she's got a great voice, so great stuff. A couple of nice uh, 45s on, on Atlantic. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the ADC band hanging out. Nice company sleeve there as well. And I particularly like this one, Lay Back in the Groove by Illusion. Nice early 80s boogie, I think 982. Uh, Bloodstone Party, Bloodstone on TNET Records. And finally, Sexy Dancer by Donald Bird on Electra. So, yeah, thank you very much, Martin. All of those were great, right on my street, so bang on. Right. Um, yeah, there is something coming back to you as well, so uh, I promise. <laughs> I know I keep saying that, but I promise. Right, okay, one other thing as well. I picked this up when I was so in that, rec that record shop in Stratford. I got quite excited about this, actually, because it's a Love, and, Love Unlimited album, which I'd never seen before. However, I realised when I got it, got it home that I'd already got it. So I've, already, I've got all their records, and I, this one caught me a little bit off guard because it was a, a sleeve that I didn't recognise. I should have looked at the back sleeve because this is the US pressing. The UK pressing looks like that. So yeah, it's uh, they just switched the sleeves around. But um, yeah, hey ho, nice to have anyway. But um, yeah, I do prefer the UK sleeve looking at that. But um, yeah, so that's got me on a real Barry White kick. So um, I've been playing a lot of Love and Limited stuff, particularly this album, In Heat. Uh, and I'll do a needle drop on one of the tunes from this as well. So, anyway, cheers. <laughs>
wait, let's go someplace, huh? Where well, I don't care.